I do fear for my daughter's safety. And just the fact that somebody might want to hurt her just for her being her, for her existence is scary. I worry about her every time she goes out. Almost the wide open view. Yeah, sunsets are great from here. No. I'm looking forward to just being in a place where I don't feel under attack, where I don't feel oppressed. It's just so sad that our country and our society are in this place of denigrating people like that and making them feel like they have no place. It's just hard to start over all over again. You just watched a short clip from a segment that CNN posted to Twitter about the McKee family from Florida. They are forced to leave their own state to protect their trans child. Now in this next clip that we're about to watch, they're going to explain why they decided to seek out gender affirming care for their daughter. And it's because, spoiler alert, they take their child's health seriously as any good parent should. But let's listen. I had never really heard that much about trans people and until I was like, 11 or 12, I didn't even know trans people existed. So I was just used to being uncomfortable. I started hormone blockers pretty soon after that. Yeah, I mean, there was times before she started getting hormones and stuff that she was suicidal. But after she transitioned, she was much more outgoing, much more like comfortable with herself. Okay, careful. We are seeing many families that are leaving. I really think if you were to ask a member of a trans family, they would tell you they go to bed at night dreaming of how to get out of the state. That to me is so heartbreaking. And I don't know how a single person can watch that and not feel deep sympathy for this family. But apparently lots of conservatives on Twitter couldn't care less. And them not caring would be one thing. These sadistic freaks actually openly celebrated this family's suffering. I'm not joking about that. So the first thing that stood out to me after watching this clip was the ratio. There's nearly 14,000 comments to 2,700 likes. And when you look at the comments, well, I mean, it gets much, much uglier. Two less Subaru wagons on the road in Florida now winning. The good people of Florida say thanks. Well, bye. They get the slightest whiff of something not going their way, and it's rage quit. When did the Babylon Bee hire CNN to do videos for them? DeSantis, we are outlawing the mutilation of kids. This family, well, I guess we are moving. Is this an advertisement for Florida? This person just shared a gif of NSYNC's Bye 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 music video. Quote, he won't let us mutilate our son. Pretty much. I honestly think that family leaving our state is a big win. Sad for the kid, but good riddance. Now, let's just stop right there. These conservatives who are celebrating this family having to leave their state to protect their trans daughter, they watched the same exact video that we just saw, right? Perhaps they saw more because the full clip is three minutes and 20 seconds. We only saw a couple of short clips, but they saw what we just saw, that sad video, and they thought, wow, this is actually really good. This is cause for celebration, good riddance. I mean, if that doesn't tell you how evil these people are, then nothing will. And I want to address something. So they claim that this family is mutilating their daughter. First of all, that's not happening. In order to receive bottom surgery, you have to be 18 years old. And if conservatives actually cared about child mutilation, don't you think that more of them would call for a ban on circumcision, which takes place in infancy? Don't you think that that is a bigger priority to people who are supposedly concerned about mutilation? But they're not. They don't care about that. They don't care about the child's safety. They're just hateful. And their supposed concern for trans children is a thin veil to hide their discriminatory beliefs. But I still can't get over the fact that in response to Florida literally creating LGBTQ plus refugees, they're saying, good, fuck them. These people are sick. They are sick, sadistic bastards. And you can't reason with these people. And you can't help them to grow and become less ignorant by teaching them about the humanity of trans people because they have chosen to reject the humanity of trans people and families who are affected by these anti-trans policies. But I don't want to give you the impression that this is just a bunch of no-named dipshits on Twitter who are celebrating this family's suffering because that wouldn't be correct. There were big-name conservatives on Twitter also chiming in to celebrate. 
publicly. For example, Mike Cernovich tweeted, This is why I love DeSantis and why his campaign failure broke my heart. Tim Pool writes, This is the future conservatives want for you. And he's not being ironic here in case that wasn't clear. Lauren Chen writes, Don't even think about coming to Tennessee. Like Florida, people around here thankfully don't look too fondly at parents who mutilate their children. She knows that that's not happening. Closeted homosexual Benny Johnson posted a bunch of cry laughing emojis and clown emojis and writes, This is the best story of the day. Yes, because people suffering is awesome. Jake Shields writes, This is the funniest video I've watched all week, but I think it's meant to be serious. Ted Cruz, a United States senator, chimed in saying someone needs to give CNN directions to the state of California. Tom Fitton writes, CNN promoting transgender extremism for children. Jordan Peterson chimes in saying, Now do net inflow to Florida and net escapees from California, you lying captured rats, CNN. Okay, Jordan, Leaving California because you think property taxes are too high is not the same thing as fleeing Florida because you fear for your child's safety, you fucking moron. Now, ask yourself this question, and I'm not asking this to conservatives because they don't care. There's no amount of reasoning with them. But if you're somebody who's kind of on the fence about this, ask yourself this question. If your child suffered from gender dysphoria to the point where they were literally suicidal, I mean, a child should never be suicidal. They should be having fun, enjoying their life. But if your child had gender dysphoria and was feeling suicidal thoughts and their pediatrician recommended gender affirming care, would you not at least give it a try if it meant saving your child's life? I think that most good parents would do anything to make sure that their child was healthy and happy. And that's what this family did. They are treating a medical problem with the recommended care that experts say is necessary to alleviate depression, suicidal ideation, anxiety. It's the same thing that they do if their kid had cancer. They would give them chemotherapy despite the risks involved with that. If you love your child, you get them the care that they need, period. It doesn't matter if they are cis or trans or whatever. All of these conservatives, however, by celebrating this family's suffering, they're implying that they wouldn't do that for their child. They think that this child should suffer, and if she commits suicide, so be it, because that's a better alternative to quote-unquote mutilation, according to them. They are extremely cruel. And to be clear... They know that this teenage girl is not being mutilated, right? They know that you have to be 18 years old to qualify for bottom surgery. But the reason why they say this is to justify their hate by reducing all gender affirming care for minors down to mutilation, because that's the only way that their simple minds can apply some level of rationality to their unjustified hatred. And if they're celebrating families fleeing, I mean, let's, let's extend this a little bit, right? Would they celebrate forced conversion therapy for this child, even though experts say that's tantamount to torture? They probably would. Uh, what about the death penalty for these parents? Capital punishment for opting for gender-affirming care for your child. How many of them would support that? I mean, some of them, in the case of Jake Shields, has already admitted that that's something that they support. These questions may sound hyperbolic, but the scary thing is that most of these folks would celebrate that too. They would celebrate the death of any parent who seeks out gender affirming care for their trans child. They would celebrate forced conversion therapy for all trans children because that's who they are. Republican politicians have cultivated widespread support for genocide and the stage has already been set. The anti-trans rhetoric is very similar to the anti-Semitic rhetoric that we saw during World War II Germany and it's called defining the enemy and the Holocaust Encyclopedia explains how it's done. First, groups are targeted as enemies and outsiders. Then, propaganda and laws are used against the so-called enemy. Finally, they incite hatred against the enemy and cultivate indifference to it and as it relates to the Nazis, Nazis, quote, they were particularly effective in creating an atmosphere tolerant of violence against Jews. I mean, the parallels to Nazi Germany and modern day America are uncanny. The modern day Republican Party's opposition to trans people is genocidal and straight up Nazi-esque. And they have literally cultivated an atmosphere where violence against trans people and trans families isn't just tolerated, but it's celebrated now. We just saw that. Now, not every single family has the resources to flee states like Florida or Texas, but I do want to explain why people want to leave 
as it relates to Florida. So when it comes to gender affirming care in this state, things are very complicated and confusing if you're a family and it, their right to fear access to this care being cut off. So Senate Bill 254 banned gender affirming care for trans youth and most adults as of May. And while gender affirming care for adults is technically legal, nurse practitioners now can no longer provide adults with gender affirming care, which means that 80% of trans adults who received care through their nurse, pra nurse practitioners are going to lose that care. As for minors, gender affirming care was banned entirely, although there was an exception. If you were already receiving gender affirming care, you would be grandfathered in and that care would continue. But there's still some questions about that. So if a child was receiving puberty blockers, can they go on to receive hormone replacement therapy or would they have to already be on HRT to be grandfathered in despite them being on puberty blockers? We don't know. It's genuinely unclear, and this is why families are fearful. But U.S. District Court Judge Robert Hinkle issued an injunction last month that halts the enforcement of Florida's gender affirming care ban for minors, but that did not apply to adults. But the lawsuit was recently amended to include trans adults as well, so relief could be provided to them too. Now, while litigation takes place, Florida's medical board has approved even more restrictions on trans health care. For example, adults must undergo psychological evaluations every two years to continue to receive HRT. And on top of that, they now need a witness's signature in order to continue getting that care. I mean, just stop for a moment and think about how absurd that is. I am on antidepressants. The idea that I would need a witness and their signature to confirm the need for my medication is downright insulting because I think I know better than anyone. I'm an adult, right? I can make that decision for myself. But when it comes to trans people, well, they now need somebody else to consent to their medical treatment, even if they are an adult. It is absurd. They are policing every single aspect of trans existence. But when it comes to the family that we saw in the video that we watched, even though the girl would technically still be grandfathered in and should in theory be able to receive gender affirming care, well, additional regulations have made it more difficult for her to get it. And she explains this. It's been difficult to access my hormones. I'm not honestly sure how I would continue to access care. Even if I wasn't trans, I wouldn't be comfortable here. It's just not a safe environment for queer people in general. So even though she technically qualifies for gender affirming care, it's still getting more difficult to access it. And this is the same strategy that we saw with red states before Roe v. Wade was overturned, right? Even though abortion was technically legal, well, you can cut off access to it and dissuade people from getting abortions by putting up additional barriers and making patients jump through hoops before getting that health care. And she nailed it at the end there. It just doesn't feel like a safe environment. So, of course, why wouldn't she want to leave? They see what the governor is doing and the atmosphere that he's cultivated. So who would feel comfortable in that environment? I know I wouldn't if I were trans. And unfortunately, not everyone who wants to leave can. Which is why I do want to direct everyone's attention to the Rainbow Railroad. This is an organization that gets LGBTQ plus people out of hostile countries, and that now includes certain states in America. Now, they currently have 8,000 requests, and they could really use your support. So I would encourage you to support them if you want to help other trans people or LGBTQ plus people in general leave dangerous situations. But one last thing that I want to leave you with here so we don't end on such a depressing note because seeing these comments really affected me in a negative way. Um, this is just a moment in time right now. And this is going to pass. Things are probably going to get worse before they get better, but they will get better. Trust me. These anti-trans bigots that we talked about, they're loud and we see them on Twitter especially, but most Americans don't think like that. Most Americans would not react by celebrating a family being forced to leave their home state because they fear for their child's safety. Most people don't think like that. Most people aren't that cruel. I refuse to believe it. And there is going to come a time in our lifetimes when we look back at this moment and we tell our grandchildren about it, and they're not even going to believe us. Because when we tell them how nasty things were towards trans people, they're going to think that it's absurd. That level of vitriol is unfathomable because by then, there'll be so much acceptance for trans people that they can't even imagine a society that allows things like this to go on. The problem is that that reality isn't going to come to fruition unless we fight for it. But in the meantime, if you are a trans person, hang in there, know that you are loved, you are valid, and you are worthy, 
and your life matters.